Welcome to Two Feathers Restorations and Design. This week we have a series of videos coming out. It's been very busy working on this 1948 Greyhound bus uh, built by GMC. We have a series of uh, things going on. So this particular video is sponsored by a company that makes some awesome aircraft stripper, uh, powderstrip.com, visit them. It's not available over the counter, so it is available by a business. And this particular video, we're highlighting some um, prep work for some of our trim pieces, as well as stripping the bus, as we are going to be primering it and painting it uh, in the driver's compartment area uh, this week here. So that's our primary focus. Uh, but we did need to remove the outside um, paint as well, because we don't want to have to pressure wash and have any of that come on to the inside where it's already finished. So we're going to move on here in a second here to see what Jill is up to in the shop. This is the internal um, window cover for the driver's side window and it's showing its age. It's got, you know, nicks and dings from over the decades of it being in use. Uh, we've done some, some initial sanding and tapped out a few of the more noticeable dents in it. Um, and now we're about to sandblast it to get it down to bare metal so the new coat of paint that we're putting on it has really good bondage to the surface of the metal and it's hopefully going to last another 60 years or however long. Um, now this piece is going in the media blaster with a uh, glass bead to get it to that nice uh, raw metal. So we're going to speed Jill up here. Um, it's really hard to see inside the blasting box. It's actually glass media. Um, I did correct her here during filming here. Um, this uh, box, we can change it out to different types of media. So we've had sand in there in the past. You can use glass, walnut shells, different types of stuff. Um, either way, it throws up a lot of dust in there. So it is a challenge to see. You're going to see her as uh, we go along here. She's pull, pulling it out, checking her work, throwing it back in. Um, so it does take a bit of time. It is a slow process, um, depending on the grain size of the media that you're using. Um, we are using a medium size glass bead uh, for this particular project. Um, it's working well on the aluminum. Uh, we attempted to use fine initially, and it's just way too slow. Uh, so here you are with the final project, um, and it looks pretty good, don't you think? So now we move out to the outdoors where our bus is located and we are removing the right side windshield. Um, this work here was a Wednesday. Um, so a lot has been accomplished. Uh, lots of video uh, was captured. So we're just trying to condense it into a couple of different uh, videos. They're only 20 minutes long. Now, this window hasn't been removed since at least the 60s. Um, it's a two-piece uh, type of uh, rubber gasket, so it's installed and it has a centerpiece that you have to um, insert when you're installing it or take it out. Now here I'm highlighting the fact that you have a, a lip here, and these are actually riveted together. Um, today's vehicles, you actually see this uh, pinch welded. And this vehicle also had a little bit of what we think is tree damage. That's where I'm pointing out on the outside. And you can see the seam is opened up a little bit. Um, that's going to have no effect. Um, you can see the little mouse head tried to help us uh, remove some of our wiring for us um, in the past. Uh, this is another reason why when the bus sits for so long, you just can't take a risk of just, you know, using the electrical. Um, because you can just, you can find out the hard way that there has been some wire damage. Um, some of these videos here, you'll see some of the dents up front here uh, from tree damage. Uh, we'll address those later. Here's the Michigan lights. Uh, this particular bus, uh, for whatever reason, they, they probably needed access to repair the Michigan light wiring. Um, they cut out this hole for some reason. It is covered by that nickel plated uh, detail that, that's on the silver size. Now the, the destination signs cleaned out real nice. Um, you really see the detail. You can see how our uh, ducting goes all the way back. Um, this tube here you might think is a drain. It actually is part of your thermostatic control system um, that's found on the driver's side. On the outside of the bus, um, 
is where the actual drains uh, for those are located. Ray was able to get all the ducts um, components re really removed. It's really stripped down. Um, at this stage, the gauges still needed to be removed uh, in the wiring. So that's that's coming later in the video. Um, we just really took this down. Um, it's getting all new wiring. It's going to be upgraded, modernized. Um, so taking it down to the bare minimum that needs to be in there will allow you to provide yourself with a really nice finished interior. And so we're going to freeze frame this for a minute. Um, there's a few owners that we've talked with um, as well as uh, another bus that we have here on site here. Uh, where the duct work uh, that was originally in the buses were removed, um, the privacy screen, etc. So the original duct system is just gone. But the original air return and fresh air, um, which would have been taken from the ceiling area, as you see here, runs down the wall and then down into the floor system. Um, this would go down underneath the bus to uh, where your heating system is as well as um, let's say the air conditioning is where I believe that tube um, goes into I got to do a little more diving into but it's definitely part of the fresh air and the re air return um, which a lot of the buses you'll see there's a, a hole near your uh, top step so that's where that comes from um, so you can modify it for modern heating because uh, we don't need as large of a uh, air tube so we're gonna move on here. Um, in the back of our bus here, um, you can see the back rear package tray uh, shelving. We're gonna zoom in here. We're gonna have to remove uh, part of that to get that ceiling part in. And if you can look carefully, you can see the center is kind of dented in. That's where our damage is. Um, so we're gonna jump in here to this morning. Um, Ray and Jill are ready to rock and roll. Uh, as far as all the windows are out, uh, we ended up deciding that there was too high of a risk with, um, as I was walking around here, using the aircraft stripper and leaving the original window shades in place. So we are going to remove these window shades to preserve them. We needed to remove them anyway. Um, the good ones are going to go up front so they'll be fully functional. Um, air, other areas might be a wall. Um, we can put the bad, what would have been the bad ones in those areas, but we're actually going to replace these with a mo modern metal that's painted to match um, because they can be in the so-called down position or if we find new old stock ones. So if we can get them all where they're functional, awesome. Um, Ray's just finishing removing some of the old uh, weather stripping that goes with these. Uh, all this rubber is in the process of being reproduced. Um, you can find all that on the website uh, that Jason has and uh, John where they have the molds they are going to be having these made soon and um, I think it's pd3751.com that you can find that uh, where a few of these parts are going to be reproduced here so shortly here we'll be ready to rock and roll and start stripping our paint here um, so we're going to come over here and see what Jill is up to up front with the bus. So what you up to over there, Jill? I am taking a pattern of the, uh, radius, or the paint, um, yeah, where it goes from the thicker up front to a thinner line down the side of the bus, and I already took a pattern of the, um, of the paint uh, on, the, on the nose around the Michigan lights so that we can replicate it. Yeah, so we were lucky um, in this particular bus that it hasn't had a bunch of paint jobs that other buses uh, have received through the years. So the original uh, thin pinstripe is intact. Um, the original white paint did wear off, as you can see. It's pretty well bare aluminum um, appearance. And uh, there's just a little bit of, uh, without getting the sun involved here, there's a little bit of white um, pieces of paint still there. Um, 
but we are putting the paint scheme back to the original on this bus. So. So now we're gonna do a speed up a video here of Ray meticulously being careful on removing these lovely shades of ours. Um, pretty simple. Uh, you'll see all those little strips of fabric. Those are actually so that way the shades as they roll up into the roof um, aren't damaged and they actually slide because of the cotton uh, material. So this is the shade that Ray took down. Um, you can kind of see that where the fabric um, is up on the wall here behind us, um, where it rides upon, um, this would be the, the interior and this shiny side was the outside. And you can kind of make out the profile on the camera here. and. Um, so I think we can reproduce this out of metal, um, like I say, for windows that will not have functioning shades. Now, if we can get our camera to focus onto this. Um, you do have this piece here that is metal and it does go through the base. Um, all the way through and that is supposed to help keep this pretty straight but you can kind of see it, it definitely does have a curvature to it from years of use um, but I think we can definitely get these redone but this is probably one of our best shades that we have and it's not brittle, brittle, brittle which is nice too it's not brittle at all So what we're going to do here is uh, work on the dents that are in the box in the corners that were clearly from trees being whacked along the roadway. Um, no other explanation for it. A little difficult to get behind the ductwork. These are actually uh, riveted into the roof line of the bus, so it's not like I can just go ahead and cut those out and put them back in uh, without replacing a rivet. It just wasn't worth uh, removing. Can I do it? Absolutely. Can I spend the time and um, fix the problem? Sure, but just not worth it. So Ray's uh, plying a layer of stripper on the driver's area. We've already stripped it before, but we want to do a one final chance since we're already there. There's After removing all those little pieces and everything, um, it's nice to take care of that one little last bit. That was a little view of uh, what, what it looks like out in the farmer's field now. Uh, Jill's applying uh, the stripper via a roller. Um, it just kind of worked out that the nap that we had laying around the shop just really didn't really allow us to do such a good job. Um, weren't quite happy with the performance. Actually, it worked out better uh, when she did the front of the bus to just um, just pour it on there and spread it out. So this is a little super speed um, pressure washing it let, after we let it sit for about 40 minutes. Um, so Ray there, uh, you can just see how it just did a hyper speed and then slowed back down how much uh, material came off. 
Um, he did use a narrow nozzle initially, then he finally went to a, I think it was a 10 degree wide nozzle. Um, we are going to have to do a second coat. We were hoping uh, that a friend of Jill's was coming in um, and she wasn't able to make it today. I uh, had other prior commitments. But even so, with uh, two workers on it uh, today, still got half of the bus um, done for the most part and we will attack um, the bus a second time on the outside since we're finding that uh, two coats is uh, important. But you gotta let that water dry off. Um, so we're hoping overnight here it will dry out and allow us a second coat and that'll allow us to be down to bare metal. Um, we will just focus on the front half of the bus. We were hoping to do the whole entire bus, but being that we're on our Indian summer of weather, um, it's just not practical. So this is, uh, again, sp sponsored by powderstrip.com. Um, you can check them out, St. Louis, Missouri. Uh, their product, it does work really well. Uh, temperature is key factor. Um, this would work a little bit better if we were in a little bit more warmth today, um, but we were about 60, 65 degrees today. And um, so we're just getting the job done before we lose the weather. So we thank you for joining us. Um, visit our sponsor and we will see you on our next episode here, uh, painting the primer on and the color.